look at Micah chapter 6 and verse 8 for our message on this Sunday morning. Micah was an Old Testament prophet that had to proclaim what does say the Lord. Amen. Micah chapter 6 and verse 8, reading from the New International Version, you find these words recorded. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. You may be seated. We have been preaching from our series Exposed. We have been talking about uh, social justice and social reform and things that are affecting our country uh, right now. Uh, we talked about the fact uh, that there has been exposed uh, the racism that faces our society, uh, that has been exposed to the ill treatment of people that are different from others. We have been talking about the fact that when something is exposed, uh, it gives us an idea that it needs to be dealt with. Right, it cannot any longer be swept under the rug. Right. And for many years, we have overlooked the harsh realities of a racist society. Today, I want to preach this final message in this series, Facing Economic and Social Inequality. Facing Economic and Social Inequality. Economic inequality refers to disparities in the economic distribution of unequally disputed economic assets and income. Let me say that one more time. Economic inequality refers to disparities in the economic distribution of economic assets and income. Economic inequality is caused by the unequal distribution of wealth. Social inequality is the expression a lack of access to housing, health care, education, employment opportunities, politics, and status. Economic and social inequality can be considered as the exclusion of people from the full equal participation in what we perceive as valuable, important, personally worthwhile, and socially desirable. In other words, economic and social inequality is not being able to achieve what one desires. Because of their skin color, because of their economic status, because of the place where they live, they have not been given an equal access to the American dream. The American dream says that we all have been created by our Creator 
and that we all have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But if we would really look at America, we must see that there are inequalities that exist. Especially when it comes to income. Especially when it comes to access to health care. And especially when it comes to the judicial process. And Micah addresses this to the children of Israel. Because what's going on today didn't just start today. But it's been going on for a long time. So Micah, who is the prophet or the lawyer of God, sends out a, a, a request. He sends out a summons to the children of Israel to appear in court. He said, I need you to appear in court because there are some charges that I have against you. And basically what he said is the charges that I have against you is that you have been operating in the process of inequality. Yeah. God says to them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call some witnesses. Some witnesses that are impartial in their judgment. Some witnesses that will not be bought off and paid off. But they will tell it just like they see it. Yeah. He said, I'm going to call as a witness the mountains. <laughs> the trees. I'm going to call nature as a witness to the inequalities, the injustices that you have done. He said, the reason why I'm going to call the mountains, I'm going to call nature to be a witness here because they've been around all the time. Yes. And they've seen everything. They know everything that you have done. And the Bible said that man has to give an account of every deed that he's done in his body, be it good or be it bad. So he says, I'm calling you into court because I have an issue with you. The fact is that you have been treating people in equal, unequal. You have been operating in an injustifiable society. God says that we have got to deal with it. He tells them the charges that he has against them. But thank God that God doesn't just tell them the charges, but he gives them a cure for what their condition is. He says to them three things that will please God. And brothers and sisters, everything that we do should be with the Design with the desire to please God. And if we really want to know what please God, paying your time does not please God. Sometimes just showing up at the church service does not just please God. Sometimes the things that we do don't necessarily please God. But God said there are three things that really please me. He says, first of all, what I need you to do is exercise justice. He's right. He, he right there in the text. He, he, he appeals to them, not from a political standpoint. He appeals to them not from a religious standpoint, but he appeals to them from a humanely standpoint. He said, I have shown you, oh mortal. <laughs> he said, oh man, I've shown you what is right. He said, if you ain't been to church, if you ain't even been under no teaching, 
teaching, you still have nature as your teacher to reveal to you that there is a right and a wrong way to treat somebody. He, he, he said they're appealing to the, the humane side of you. And he said, the first thing that I need you to understand here, I need this society to exercise justice. The basic definition of justice is fairness in the way people are dealt with. Justice, according to Nelson's new illustrated Bible dictionary, specifies what is right. Not only as measured by a code of law, but also by what makes for right relationships, as well as harmony and peace. Amen. I, 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 this message is not just for America. Yeah. Ah, because America does have a relationship with its citizens. But he said it's not just for a society but it's also for an individual. And what he says is that within your own relationships, you have to learn how to exercise justice. And in your own relationship, you have to know and learn how to do the right things. Yeah, he said that it is, uh, makes for right relationships as well as harmony and peace. The Bible speaks of doing justice. Society speaks of seeking justice. Oh God have mercy. And there's a difference. The Bible speaks of doing justice. In, in Psalm 82 and 3, the writer says this, give justice to the poor and the orphan. Uphold the rights of the oppressed and the destitute. We often speak of getting justice, whereas the Bible speaks of doing justice. The Bible says that doing justice is to maintain what is right, or to set things right. The Bible says that you are to maintain what is right. But when you discover that something within a relationship is not right, justice said that you ought to say it right. Oh, God have mercy. In other words, the Bible says it like this. He said, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. In other words, he said that if there's something that's not right within a relationship that you are involved in, you have the responsibility to get it right. Yeah, he said that we not only must maintain what is right, but we must set things right yeah. when we discover that they are wrong. Justice is done when honorable relationships are maintained between husbands and wives, between parents and children, between brothers and sisters, between employers and employees between government and citizens, and mainly between the human beings and God. We should exercise justice, not only as retaliative, not only as retributive, but also as rehabilitative. Oh, God have mercy. I'm going to try to get through it all. But we have got to understand that justice has a purpose. Justice has a purpose not only to punish those that are wrong, not only to penalize those that have done wrong, but justice has a purpose of restoring those that have done wrong. Oh, God have mercy. I can remember the young man that got killed in Atlanta. He said that he had been released from jail. But the one thing that he found was that the prison system did not prepare him for when he entered back into society. In other words, he was not made whole. And justice seeks to make one whole again. Even though they have done things that are wrong. Because if justice, 
but I will help me in this place. If justice had really been served on us, if, if God would have allowed justice just to be uh, uh, retributive and retaliative, if God would have allowed justice to do to us what we deserve, none of us would have been here. But thank God that God sees justice as also rehabilitated. In other words, he gives us an opportunity to get things right. I don't know about you, but I thank God every day of my life, not only for another chance, not only for a second chance, but I thank God for God giving me a multitude of chances so I can get it right. He said, we have got to learn how to exercise justice. Not only does he say that we ought to learn how to exercise justice in the text, but he says we also ought to learn how to extend mercy. Yeah. Good God Almighty. And I like the way he says that in the text. He, he says that, uh, that we've got to learn how to love mercy. Yeah. Now, now, now that's important. You can't overlook that. Okay. Uh, because what he says here. He don't want you just extending mercy just so you can say, I extend mercy. But he said that you got to love to extend mercy. you got to love to give somebody another chance. you got to love looking beyond folks' faults and yet seeing their need. we got to learn how to extend mercy. The basic definition of mercy is to show compassion. Forgiveness and leniency. Compassion for those who are dealing with circumstances beyond their control. Sometimes the church can be so judgmental. And we don't take the time to be compassionate enough to realize that sometimes people are dealing with things that are beyond their control. Even in this society that we are living in right now, even in America, we want to penalize those young children that were brought over here when they were children, and we want to send them back. They didn't have anything to do with that. And the Bible says that you only extend mercy to those that are dealing with circumstances that are beyond their control. Oh, God, have mercy. I can't have to call my skin color in black. I can't help it because I was born in a poor family. But the Bible teaches us that even though I am what I am, you still got to love to it extend mercy to me. Because there are things that are beyond our ability to control. Yeah, thank God for his leniency. We saw the leniency when the woman who was caught in the very act of adultery. And they had all the charges and evidence against her, but Jesus said to her, I'm going to extend mercy. I know you're guilty, but I'm going to extend mercy. God's grace gives us what we don't deserve. But God's mercy does not give us what we do deserve. And I don't know about you. I used to shout all over the place when I thought about God's grace. But when I took a closer look at God's mercy, yeah. it's something about his mercy yeah. that makes me feel real good right now. Yeah. Because God saw everything wrong that I did. Yeah. He saw every mistake that I made. But he still had mercy on an old wretched sinner like me. And I don't know about you, but that's enough to make me want to shout about because I could have, should have, would have been dead sleeping in my grave if it had not been the fact that God extended his mercy towards me. So I said, great is his mercy towards me. His compassions are new everything. Think about it. None of us was worth waking up 
this morning. None of us got everything right. But still he woke us up this morning. I want to tell you that he operated in mercy this morning. Because mercy extends beyond punishment with hell. God's mercy shows us that God expects his children also to operate in mercy. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 7, he says it like this. Bless all the merciful for they shall be shown mercy. And God said that if I've shown you great mercy, America, I've made you the most prosperous nation there is, America. I've given you things that other countries do not have, America. I have extended mercy to you, even though you operated in a system of slavery. I still extended mercy to you, and I didn't destroy you in your own. And all I'm saying to you today is that same mercy that I extended to America, you need to extend that same mercy to the individual today. Him, his people, if you want to correct what's wrong, exercise justice, extend mercy, and finally, he says, exemplify humility. Good God Almighty. Sometimes God has to bring us down just so he can build us up. Never would have thought that a virus that we can't even see would shut down everything. But sometimes uh, God has to bring us down so we can realize that we are nothing without Him. How can we say that we are a, a, a church state? How can we say that we uh, trust in the Lord? How can we say that we are one nation under God and not operate in the principle that God has set forth? I said, I gotta break it down. And God uses this little virus to shut down every aspect of this country. It's almost as if we were back in Egypt. God has a way yeah. of getting man's attention. Yeah. And God said that what I really want you to do is, I really want you to humble yourself. Yeah. Humility is a freedom from arrogance that grows out of the recognition that all we have and are and all we are comes from God. Humility is a freedom from arrogance that grows out of the recognition that all that we have and all that we are comes from God. Humble people focus more on God and others than on themselves. Oh, God have mercy. I don't have time to go into that. But that's a picture for somebody to see. That 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 that, that humble people. It ain't always about them. It ain't always about their lives. It ain't always about what they want. But it's always about others and about what God wants. That's what humble people look for. True humility does not produce pride, but gratitude. Yes. True humility. Jesus is the supreme example of humility. Jesus is the supreme example of humility. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, he says, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you 
Because I am humble and gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your soul. Jesus is our example of what it means to humble oneself. In Mark chapter 10, verse 45, he said, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Text teaches us that we must learn that in order for there to be equality, in order for there to be equality in relationships, there must be a people who choose to exercise justice. They must choose to extend mercy. And they must choose to exemplify humanity. The Bible teaches us that Jesus was on his way to Calvary. He was on his way to pay for a society that operated in inequality. And in order for him to make the playing field level, the Bible says he died. On their old rugged cross. So he could bring equality to all. Because the Bible says in John 3.16. For God so loved the world. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. But have everlasting life. He said I equalize the place. All of can have the opportunity to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This message is not only for America, but it's for each one of you as an individual. There are situations and circumstances in our lives and in our own relationships where we are operating in inequality. He says that once we have determined that we have been operating in inequality, what we need to do here, exercise justice. Yeah. Spike Lee would say, do the right thing. So we have to understand that our relationships are important. And that's what he's talking about, his relationships. Make sure that we exercise justice in our relationships. Not only exercise justice in our relationships, but extend mercy. People are not perfect. Y'all hear me? Those people that you love to death, those people that you love with all of your heart, they are not perfect. And there will come a time yeah. in that relationship where you have got to extend mercy. Because mercy, love, covers a multitude of faults. So our relationships will get better if we exercise justice and if we extend mercy, but also if we Exemplify humility. My grandfather told me when I was a little boy, humble is the way. If you want to go higher, humble yourself. The Bible teaches us that if you humble yourself to the Lord, that in due season, He will exalt you. You need to know this because. Sometimes when we exalt ourselves, ourselves will bring us down. People will bring us down. When we lift ourselves up. But can I tell you this? When God lifts you up, oh, 
Hallelujah. 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 Hall